The recent 2022.9 Home Assistant release came with a lot of nice and welcome updates to the platform, but it also has a bit of a dark side because it's forcing me to fundamentally change how I automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. I've been using Home Assistant since around 2015 or so. And while there've been a lot of updates and changes to the platform since then, very few have made me wanna change my approach to building a smart home. The last big one that I remember was back in 2020 when they added the choose action to our automations and scripts. That one altered how I built automations going forward and I refactored a quite a few of my automations to take advantage of that choose action. But the scale of that change is small compared to what the 2022.9 release is bringing to my smart home. We're talking about a complete configuration redesign level event here. And really it's because the Home Assistant dev team has this drive to make the platform easier for new users. Building automations in Home Assistant has always been a bit of a hurdle. In the beginning, it required YAML, and writing them was a lot like programming. In recent years, we got a UI editor that made editing and creating automations easier. But even then, it's remained a bit clunky, even though it's made the process a lot easier for new users. For me, the really useful automations required complex logic that you could only do in YAML. And because of that, writing them in YAML has remained my primary method for creating automations. For one, I found the YAML version of my automations easier to read all at one glance. And two, because I like to store my automations in packages so that if I was in the middle of writing an automation and decided I needed to add a scene or a script or even a helper, I could just do that in the same screen. I wouldn't have to back out and go to a different part of the UI to do that. Then I could get right back to writing my automation. The updates to the automation UI not only make it easier to see your automation all at one glance, but it adds little bits of information automatically that make it easier to read as well. So I wanted to do a quick run through of how to create an automation using the new updated automation UI. And the automation I have here is pretty simple, but we're going to hit create automation. I'm gonna start with the empty automation. And then right here, we're just gonna start adding our triggers. And in this case, I have a wax warmer that I want to only run for 20 minutes once it gets turned on. So for our trigger here, we're gonna find our wax warmer. We want to know when it goes from off to on for 20 minutes. Now, as you can see, it provides us a nice little update of what's happening in this trigger, but we could edit that if we wanted to. If you wanted to make it a little clearer, you could hit this rename and rename this trigger to something that made more sense to you. But for this one, it seems pretty good. Then in this case, I don't really want any conditions. All I want is that when this air freshener has been on for 20 minutes, I wanna turn it off. So now we're going to come down to action and we're simply going to call the service, switch turn off. We will choose our entity. And as you can see, it's put our little summary here of what's going on, and that's it. Now, one change that you will see is that you don't see anything here for naming that, but we can do that by hitting this save button. One word of caution, I found a weird bug that may already be fixed in one of the updates that have come out since this video was recorded. But if you hit cancel, it goes ahead and saves the automation anyway, and it will just have a name like new automation seven. It wouldn't give you the option to save it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this one. And I tend to use generic names these days for my automations because if I need to do anything else with this wax warmer, I'll come back and make the changes in this automation instead of spinning up a whole new automation. As you can see, it's renamed our automation up here. And if you wanted to know where any of the other features or if you wanted to rename this one, you could click the three dots up here and you could click rename to rename this automation. You could disable the automation if you would like. This is where you would change the mode. If you need to change the mode, you will have to do it in these three dots as opposed to as a drop down in the actual screen. And you can run it from here as well if you wanted to. And it's got this little information that pulls this up so you can see the history, you can see the settings, and you could rename it here as well if you wanted to. And that's it. This was just a simple demonstration of how you would create an automation using the new automation UI. Now, as cool as the new updates to the automation UI are, I don't think if they were the only changes that were recently made, I would be considering changing how my configuration was laid out. I'm stubborn after all. 
What really clinched the whole reorganization deal was a feature that got added back in the 2022.8 release that I really didn't pay much attention to. Home Assistant Repairs was the top build feature in the 2022.8 release notes, and yet I still didn't pay attention to it. It's simple in its purpose and complex in its execution. The idea is to provide you with a dashboard that lists parts of your configuration that need your attention. This dashboard will pop up in your settings screen and will list any repairs that the system finds. This could be integrations that have been removed from Home Assistant that you still have referenced in your system, or it could be automations that are calling services or entities that that no longer exist on your system, and the information provided should contain the important pieces that will help you fix it, like links to the documentation or even a link to the offending part of your configuration. And that last one is the killer feature of Home Assistant Repairs. When Home Assistant does in fact find that you have some things that need your attention or things that you need to repair, it will list them off the top of your settings menu. As you can see here, it's found three things that I need to take care of. If we click on this Skylar School Tracking Uses an Unknown Service, we'll get a little pop-up that gives us some information about what's going on. Unfortunately, a lot of this information is pretty generic. It does tell us, though, the name of the service, this notify.parents underscore iOS that's causing the problem, so we know what we need to take care of. But most of the information provided here, other than the name of the automation and that service, is not specific to what's going on right now. The really nice feature though is that you can click this edit the automation link and it will take you to the automation so that you can get to work fixing it. Or it would if you had your automation stored in that automation.yaml file. And in my case, most of them are not. Which brings us to why I want to move all of my automations to that file. Because if the automation was in that file, this link becomes extremely useful. For example, if I go back to my three repairs and I click on this lighting detected uses an unknown service, I get the same pop-up. It tells me what automation is having the issue and it tells me that it's calling this unknown service script.status underscore ANNC. I already know right off the bat what the issue is here because I haven't completely set up Jarvis yet and put all of my scripts back in place and I don't know that I will be putting all of them back in place. So in the meantime, I probably could just remove this service. This automation does live in the automation.yaml file though. So if I click this edit the automation, it takes us right to the automation. And I think that is amazing. Now, unfortunately, that service is actually called within that script, lighting underscore warning underscore audible. Now from this automation editor, if I could just click on this script and go straight to the script and edit it, that would be even more amazing. But unfortunately, that doesn't exist today. So to edit that script, I'm either going to have to back out of this automation and go to the script editor or jump into the YAML and edit the script. And unfortunately, I know this script is not in the scripts.yaml file, so it will be one of those things I have to fix in the YAML. But the easiest thing to do at this point would probably be to just remove that service. And I can always add it back later. So we'll just go ahead and remove this from this automation. And now we can go right back to our settings menu we can go to that repair option and we can hit this submit button, which tells Home Assistant that we've repaired this issue and now we can click finish and we should be good. We shouldn't see that again unless Home Assistant detects another issue with that automation. Like I said, that repair feature really makes the case for keeping your automations and scripts in their respective files. While I still can't add helpers or scripts while in the middle of building an automation using the UI editor, being notified of issues and being able to click on a link to go right to that automation so I can start fixing it is going to be a massive help in keeping my smart home working. Anyway, I'm off to move all of my automations to my automation.yaml file so I can take advantage of these changes. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and even a link to buy me a coffee if you so choose in the description of this video. Or simply let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. Thank you.